you guys found this video helpful, make sure you drop a like button. Drop a like button. What's going on guys? Welcome back to today's video. Today we're going to talk about everything you need to know about systems of equations. What kind of question is it? How it shows up on SAT? What kind of types are there? And how to solve each type. And if it's your first time here, my name is John and I've been helping students raise their SAT score to the moon for the past decade. And I'll show you everything you need to know about systems of equations so you can start getting more questions right and start raising your score. So let's get straight into it. So first of all, how do we know whether SAT is testing us on systems of equation? Well, here's a quick hint. Whenever you see a question and you see two equations, it's a systems of equation question because one equation is just an equation, but once there's more than one, two or three, that now becomes a system because there's more than one equation. Systems of equation, when there's two or more equations, okay? So whenever you see two equations like so, that's how you know that this is a system of equation question, okay? And there are going to be three types of systems of equation, okay? What are they? First type is going to be the number of solutions slash intersection between two lines, okay? So here's what an example looks like. In the system of equations above, because we have two equations right here, C is a constant, C is right there. For what value of C will there be no solution to the system of equations, right? So essentially in this case, when they give you two equations and they're asking you to find what C is when there's no solution, essentially what it's asking is there is not going to be a intersection. No solution between two lines means there's not going to be a intersection, okay? So for this question, how do we solve it? Well, based, we're gonna use something called the matching rule. Matching rule will tell us when there are no solution, when there's one solution, and when there's like infinite number of solutions. Okay, but we'll go over that in a second. So the first type is going to be when there is a system and they ask you whether there's no solution, one solution, or infinite solution. Okay, so that's the first type. What's the second type? Second type is going to be solving for a variable when there is a system. So just by looking at this question, there are two equations right here. So we already know there's a big chance that it's systems of equation. And let's look at the question. It says, if X and Y is the solution to the system of equations above, what's the value of Y, right? So we are solving for a variable. We're solving for a Y, right? So how do we find, how do we find out what Y is equal to? In this case, we use substitution and elimination to solve for a variable. Does that make sense? So second type is going to be systems and you're solving for a variable and you have to use substitution and elimination, which we're gonna go over in a second, okay? Third type is going to be solving for an expression. So unlike the second type where we're solving for a variable, we're going to solve for an expression. And what do we mean by that? It's going to be something like this. Based on the system of equations above, what is the value of 5x plus 5y? So you see how it's a little bit different. There's two equations, which means it's going to be a system, but it's asking for 5x plus 5y. It's not asking for x, it's not asking for y, it's asking for an expression, 5x plus 5y. That's an expression. And when SAT asks for a expression on a systems question, what you have to do is you have to solve them as a whole. What I mean by that is you're not gonna find out what X is, find out what Y is and plug it in and then find out what 5X plus 5Y is. That's gonna take forever. That's just gonna wait, take way too long. And questions are designed so that they, it's just gonna get like 16 times harder if you do it that way. How you should do it is just solve it as a whole. So we're gonna go over what it means by that in a second. So those are the three types. Let's get straight into how to solve these questions. Okay, so let's get straight into it, guys. First one is going to be based on number of solutions slash intersection. So let's go over here. We see those two equations right there, and we know they are both going to be lines because the highest x one is one here and the highest x one is one there, okay? So let's look at this. In the system of equations above, C is going to be a constant, and constant means that is going to be a number. C is going to be a number. It's not a variable X, Y, or Z. It's going to be a just straight out number, okay? For what value of C will there be no solution to the system of equations, okay? So no solution means there is going to be no intersection, okay? So how can we approach this question, okay? Well, what you're gonna do is you're gonna use something called the matching rule. I'm gonna give you a brief rundown of it, okay? So how matching rule works is we're gonna first find out the ratio of coefficients for x, y, and number, okay? So coefficient is going to be a number attached to the variables. So for 2x, 2 is going to be the coefficient, and for 4x, 4 is going to be the coefficient, okay? So we're gonna find the ratio of coefficients for x, y, number. So as we rewrote here, here's what it looks like. The ratio of coefficients for x is going to be 2 and 4, so it's going to be 2, 4 right which comes down to one half okay 
And for y, it's going to be 3 over c, which simplifies to 3 over c. And for the number, it's going to be 5 over 8, which simplifies to 5 over 8. Okay, so it represents the x's here, y's here, and the numbers here. Okay, so once you find the ratio of coefficients, here's the rule that you can follow. In order for there to be a no solution, the ratio of x and actually ratio of, let me raise that, ratio of coefficients for x and y must be the same. Okay. So in order for there to be no solution, the ratio of coefficients for x and y, they must be the same. So what's the ratio of coefficients for x and y? Here's the x and here's the y, right? And we need them to be equal in order for there to be no solution. So how do we find what value of c can be? Well, you just cross multiply and find the value of c. So c is equal to two times three, which is going to be six, okay? So answer is going to be d. Does that make sense? So first type is a little bit more complicated, but what you need to know is how to use the match rule. And if you want to learn more about it, I'm going to give you a lecture where you can go and like learn everything about it. Okay. So if it was confusing, it's, it's normal. It's a little bit tough, but you can get hang around a bit with the lecture. Okay. So that's how you solve this kind of question. So a couple of you might be thinking, hey, wait, whoa, 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 that was really complicated. I, I don't want to learn this, but guys, trust me, if you if you got this down in the back of your head, this can be solved super quickly. So it looks something like this, okay? So, okay, equations, two equations right here and no solutions. Okay, no solutions, that means X and Y have to be matching for coefficients. So let me just find the coefficient ratio for X and Y, which will be two over four and three over C, and we need them to be equal to each other. So you just cross multiply, it becomes 2c is equal to 12, c is equal to 6, and there's your answer right there. So it's a really quick method, it just looks long because I've been exp I've been explaining every single step of the way, but once you get it down, it's going to be the fastest thing ever, it's going to save you so much time. So make sure you guys really understand it. Second one, this one's a bit simpler. Solving for a variable. Now we're looking for a variable, we're looking for maybe something like x or y or z, we're just looking for a single letter, okay? Let's look at this here. We have two equations, which means it's going to be a systems question. And the question says, if X and Y is the solution to the system of equations above, what's the value of Y? So we're looking for the value of Y, right? How do we do that? What we do is we either use substitution or elimination. Okay, so I'm just going to use elimination for the sake of simplicity. Actually, there, yeah, we're going to use it. So we're gonna use elimination for the sake of simplicity and here's how it works. So three X plus two Y is equal to nine and five X minus Y is equal to minus 11. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna match, we're gonna match the coefficients for the Y's, okay? So how can we do that? We're gonna multiply this whole thing by two and that's gonna become, let's see, here, let's rewrite it. Three X plus two Y is equal to nine and it becomes 10 X minus 2y is equal to minus 22 okay and once you do that all the y's the coefficients of the y's are matching plus 2 and minus 2 right and if we simply add them add these two equations together 3x plus 10x is going to be 13x 2y minus 2y is going to be 0 and that becomes minus two, uh minus 12 no 13 right so now our y is gone and we're only left with x in the equation so 13 x is equal to minus 13 x is going to be minus one okay so now that we found uh x is that our answer no we're looking for y so how can we find y we just plug the x into either this equation or this equation okay you can either plug it to the first one or the second one it's going to give you the same answer so i'm just going to plug it into the second one so 5x 5 times minus 1 minus y is equal to minus 11 so what does that become minus 5 minus y is equal to minus 11 and if you add 5 add 5 minus y becomes minus 6 y is 6 our answer is going to be 6 okay so that's how elimination work elimination tend to be quicker and simpler than substitution but there are some questions where it can't be solved with elimination you have to use substitution so you want to have both of them in your toolbox okay so this can also be uh, learned in the lecture we're gonna go over in a second at the end of the video but that's how you solve this kind of question solving for a variable 
the last type of question for system is going to be solving for an expression okay we're not looking for a single value we're looking for the big chunk x plus y okay so two equations we already know is going to be systems and let's look at this based on the system of equations above what's the value of 5x plus 5y okay so compared to the previous question where it just asked for a single variable single letter it's asking for more than one thing right it's asking for 5x plus 5y and this is known as the expression okay when there's an expression how you find it is you don't want to find it individually okay individual you don't want to do that rather you want to find it as a whole okay you want to find it as a whole finding it as a whole will be a lot simpler and if you try to do this question individually it's not going to work out most of the times okay so what do i mean by finding it as a whole just try to make your equation similar to 5x plus 5y okay so 2x plus 3y is equal to 1200 and 3x plus 2y is 1300 and how can we get 5x plus 5y out of it well 2 3 3 2 they add up to 5 right so if you add the equations up like that it becomes 5x plus 5y is going to equal to 2500 and there's your answer right there 2500 okay so you see how simple that was if you tr if you try to find like x or y with substitution or elimination like first of all this is section three okay this is section three and numbers are pretty big 1200 300 1300 and if you try to do it that way numbers gonna get big things are gonna get messy and you're gonna just not want to study for the sat it's just way too difficult okay so when they ask you to find a when they ask you to solve for an expression always find it as a whole okay so this is gonna work 99.8 percent of the times there will always be a question where this doesn't work you have to find it individually but vast majority of times you're going to want to find it as a whole when they ask for a expression okay doesn't make sense so that's going to be those are going to be the three types of systems of equation question matching rule solving for a variable and solving for an expression so that is exactly how you solve these three types of systems of equation questions out there. Okay, I could have, I wish I could have gone a little bit more in depth, um, explaining it slowly, giving you guys more details so you guys can understand it better. But otherwise, if I did that, the, this video would be like 30, 40 minutes long, and that is not for everyone. This method, it it takes a little bit of work at first to learn it, but once you learn it down, once you got it down, you're going to be set, and it's going to be so much simpler and so much easier. And but not everybody wants to go through that struggle to learn the faster way and get a better score however if you want to really learn the best way to solve these questions and you're really committed to raising your sat score there's going to be a link in the description box down below where there is a where it's going to take you to a private lecture on systems of equations it teaches you everything that you need to know about systems and you are going to be a god when it comes to systems questions there's also going to be a worksheet that you can download and print out and you can follow along the lecture and you can do the practice problems with the video and you're going to be it's going to be a lot easier for you to follow overall okay and after that there is going to be a list of practice questions that you can try and these are all based on systems of equations and if you can get these questions down if you can solve them without too much trouble then you can be confident that you are good with systems questions and you can move on to the next to next topic or just try the practice exam again if you guys found this video helpful make sure you drop the like button drop a like button no, no no make sure you guys smash the like button and if you guys love this kind of content make sure you guys subscribe to the channel because i release this kind of videos going over what you need to know for certain topics on the sat and summarizing it so that you don't have to spend hours and hours going through books going through lectures trying to understand what you really need to know honestly if i had someone who's going to like summarize what i need to know for the sat i, I think i could have raised my sat score a lot faster than i did back in high school it took me about eight to nine months just grinding out books after books after books learning stuff that's not even on the exam and i just wasted so much time anyways guys if you guys have any questions or comments or concerns in, when it comes to sat high school or college admissions make sure you leave them in the comment box below i'll take my time and try to answer the question as detailed as possible and also if there's a topic that you want me to cover next make sure you leave it in the comments because the videos that I make for this channel is solely based on what you guys want to see. This channel is dedicated to get you guys to raise your score and not my score. I already got my score. I already went to college and I'm, I don't need SAT anymore. So let me help you on what you need to know next. Hope you guys found this video valuable and I will see you guys on the next video. Bye-bye.